Welcome to this video. I'm going to show you how to do the data analysis for the freefall experiment we conducted in class. The first thing is to recreate your raw data table in Excel. So there were three columns, uh, three or four, two to four columns depending on what you collected, what you wrote down. The first thing that you wrote down was values of vertical displacement. So that's the quantity. The next thing that you need in the column heading is the variable, which is delta y. The way you get a delta symbol, hit insert at the top, and then go all the way over to the right, choose symbol, and the delta sign might pop up, pop up but if it doesn't, um, if you go to like normal text, then you click 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 times, and I'm clicking down here on the bar itself, not on the arrow. Click 10 times, and there's delta right in the middle on the left close. So now I just added the delta, so it's delta y. The final, the third thing in the column that you need is the unit. We're going to plug values in with meters. Then the next column was time of release, was the next thing that my group recorded. That's t initial with units of seconds. Then we add time, let's see, of impact that's the final amount of time, the final final moment of time, and the units are seconds. Uh-oh, my text is running into the other text. So how do I make my columns wider? You can manually move these around by clicking on the line between C and D, or you can simply double click on that line between C and D, and it auto fits. Better yet, you can highlight the entire column, so I do that by clicking the C, not by this, but I click the C itself, and then I drag over, click and drag. Then I click any of these lines between C and D, or the line between D and E, double click, and they all, all auto adjust. Now I need my initial to be a subscript, so what I do is I highlight the I only, I go back to home, and then next to font there's this little button which you click. And then this pops up, you choose subscript at the bottom, hit OK, and now that I is subscript. Do the same thing for final time, T final. So you go, you click font, click the button, choose subscript, hit OK. And now the final is subscripted. All right, let me plug in my values. Here they are, I have put my values in. The first thing that you notice is that these displacements are, and the way it looks on your screen is they're probably like this. These displacements, have different amounts of decimal places. This one has one decimal place, this one has two, this one has no decimal places. So it's good to standardize this in your column. We're going to talk about how to round later uh, when we learn about uncertainty, but for now, let's just make sure everything has the same number of decimal places. The most decimal places any value has is two, so let's give all of these values two decimal places. At home, in the number portion, there are these buttons here, which stand for increase and decrease number of decimal places. So I want to increase the decimal places, so I'm going to click this. And let's say, oops, too many, let me take some back. I want two decimal places, good. Likewise here, this value has two, there's no uh, two decimal places. The most that any has is two, so let me give them all two decimal places and same goes here, two decimal places. Now I like to center things, so I highlight them all, click and drag to select them all, and center. The next thing that you need to find is the time of descent. And that is a, uh, the variable is delta t, so rather than find the delta again, I'm just going to copy, control c, and then click back into the box and paste. If I hit control V without clicking, without entering the cell or going into the cell, it replaces all of my text with the, the delta symbol. So then you want to control Z to undo a control Z. Z is in zebra. So you click into the cell by clicking up on the formula bar, paste the delta sign, delta T, that's measured in seconds, double click between F and G to fit the width, and then center. Now what I can do is I can calculate using Excel, 
final minus initial time. The way you calculate is you first put equals. That's how you tell Excel that what comes next is an equation. And what I could do is I could say, okay, I need 1.8, the final time, minus 1.6, like this, minus 1.6, and then calculate, and then I have to do the same thing here, 3.1 minus, oh, this is going to take a long time. This is a bad way of doing things. Excel is pretty powerful, um, and it can calculate this automatically for all of these columns very easily. Here's how you do it. Hit equals, and then rather than typing 1.8, you click the cell itself, which contains 1.8. Then you subtract this value, and you click the cell with the value you want to subtract. Hit enter. And now, and these are all probably showing up on the left, uh, on the right rather. So now, instead of retyping equals this minus minus this, and then doing that the whole way down, what you can do is you can click this little box in the corner, click it so you get a different icon, and drag it down to the end. And now Excel is automatically calculating, and here it calculates 1 to the left minus 2 to the left. In this cell, it's calculating 1 to the left minus 2 to the left. E6 and D6, those are called the references. We're referencing this cell and referencing this cell. So when you copy a formula down, the references move down as well. See that? Every time I go down, the references have moved down as well. And I want to center this, so I'm going to center, center, whoops, click it twice. Next we need time squared, and the variable is delta t squared, so I'm going to control V. I still have the delta symbol in my clipboard. Control V is paste, V is in Victor. So delta t squared, the unit is seconds squared. And then I need to highlight the two and superscript it. So you go over to Home, Font, and then choose Superscript. Likewise for this squared, it's seconds squared because the time in squared is being, so if you square the time, then the units get squared as well. So I need to highlight, go to Font, click Superscript, OK. Enter, double click to justify the width, uh, or sorry, to auto fit the width. Now, here's how you calculate time squared. We're going to say, okay, Excel, here comes an equation, so equals. And then you click on the time, then you, you do the caret, so shift six is how you do the caret, and then two for squared. Hit enter. And these are all showing up. On your computer, they're showing up on the right side. Good. And then you drag down, drag that formula down, and let the references change. Let's see, like this. Uh-oh, that didn't do it. I didn't get the box. I wasn't grabbing the box. So Control-Z, and then you get the box and pull it down. You can also copy Control-C, Shift-Click to highlight the cells where you want to paste. Shift-Click, and then Control-V to paste in those cells. Center, center. Now that I've got this finished, I've got my data table finished, what I want to do is add my graph. So you click Insert, Insert, and then under Charts, you click this button with all the dots, and you choose the first option with no lines. Now, I'm getting all of this weird stuff showing up on my graph. I don't want any of that. So what do I do? How do I get rid of it? Here's what you do. Right click on the graph, on the area itself. Put, uh, click select data, and this pops up. All of these things on the left we want to delete. Don't worry about these, these will go away automatically. So you click, you remove, click, remove, click, remove, click, remove. Now what we have is a blank chart, which is exactly what we want. You may be lucky enough where your chart is blank from the get-go. If so, follow along from here. So next I need to add a new series. A series is what Excel calls a data set. It's a, it's a collection of XY pairs. So you hit Add. For X values, you're going to choose the values of time squared. That's what you want on the x-axis. For the Y values, you have to highlight the one and hit backspace to delete it. And for Y values, you want these here, the displacement. You hit OK, 
and then you hit OK here as well. So OK twice. Not looking so bad. OK then. This Series 1, it might be showing up over here. It might be on the bottom. If you see Series 1, go ahead and delete that. We don't need it. Now what you need to do is right click on a data point, a data point, not on the chart area, but right click on a data point, and hit Add Trend Line. The trend line pops up. That's a line of best fit. We want it to be a linear best fit line, so a straight line. So you, linear is automatically selected. Leave it at linear. And then there's one more thing that we need from our trend line. We need to scroll to the bottom of the options, the format trend line options, and we need to check the box that says display equation because we want to know what's the value of slope of the trend line. So the equation is displayed. Don't worry about r squared. You can exit out of this. And this equation has the form y equals mx plus b. So my y-intercept is negative 0 0.0233, sure is close to 0. And my slope is 4.809, which is very close to the 4.9 I expected. We're almost finished. We need to add axes titles. So you click the plus on your chart, choose axis titles, and a main heading. I was dropping, what was I dropping? My stress ball. So stress ball in free fall. Hey, that's fun. And then my axis titles. What's on my y axis? I have delta, uh oh. I have delta y. So I'm going to go back and insert, go to the side, symbol. Because I just used delta, it's in my recently used. So I double click and then I close. So my y-axis is delta y in meters. My x-axis, and I'm going to copy the delta so I don't have to go find it again. Double click to highlight all of it. Paste. My x-axis is delta t squared in seconds squared. So highlight the two. And then a trick you can use whenever you're editing text in a graph, highlight the thing that you want to superscript then push control, shift, and plus all at the same time. And that superscripts it. And then control, shift, plus. That trick doesn't work in a cell in your data table, only on a graph. Kind of annoying. OK, so my graph is finished. So this is it. We're finished. We have our data table. We have our graph. The uh, There are some things that you have to do. You have to do a couple of calculations. And the next video will show you what you need to calculate, where you need to put all of this information, how to organize it in a Word document.